All right, we got Willie Dyson behind the scenes bio interview with Willie Dyson. <laughs> oh, that's good. Did what? I'm good to go, man. All right, so just introduce yourself, tell them your name, your, where you're from, your uh, rapper name, and just a little bit before you start doing music. Uh, my name is Willie Dyson. I go by the name of Dice. Uh, from St. Louis. Went to Kirkwood High School. Uh, played college ball at Northwest Missouri State University. Uh, I'm hoping to, that people will be inspired not only through my story, but through my message, through my music. No, I don't see no color. No, I don't think you understand. I remember like yesterday in the bathroom mirror for the first time I saw my mother's face. She looked at me, I looked at her, I began to scream. She did not care because once I finally stopped crying, I saw no color. I was in the first grade and uh, I was getting out of school and I saw all of my friends getting into their cars. Uh, Every white kid got in with white parents. Every black kid got in with black parents, parents and so forth. And I always walked home because it was right down the street. And I, I ended up walking home that day and I walked inside and my mom was standing in the bathroom mirror and I, she picked me up. And uh, I looked at her and I looked in the mirror and we had just kind of had a discussion about like kidnapping and strangers. And I looked at her and I looked at myself and I freaked out and screamed I've been kidnapped and took off out the front door and uh, climbed up a tree and kind of just waited there because I didn't know exactly what was going on. That's a very significant uh, part and time in my life because it was when I first realized that I was different than my mother uh, and that it was okay. Uh, I realized that it didn't matter what color she was, she was my mom, and I was gonna, and I was gonna stay true to that. My name is Ken Dyson. Uh, my wife Donna and I uh, adopted Willie in uh, 1990. I'm pretty sure from what I read, uh, she was on a lot of different drugs, um, things like that. When we did get Willie, he was five weeks old. He was what you call failure to thrive. I was just abandoned uh, more than once. I think they, she had an opportunity to uh, take me back a second time and she just didn't show up. They told us he never walked, he never talked, he was blind, deaf, cerebral palsy, everything. He was definitely in need. He was uh, an, a neglected child, infant. Um, you could tell instantly that was, there was gonna be needs there. I'm kind of thankful that everything kind of did happen the way it did because I don't know what, what I would be doing right now if that hadn't happened. Um, and it was all about helping others was mom's, you know, mantra. And my mother believed that love cures everything. Um, I think that's where I get a lot of my personality from, just from that saying, uh, because anybody can love. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, Muslim, I, it doesn't matter, everybody loves. Uh, in the same way, it's universal. There is no difference between love. And my parents always taught us it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter religion, nothing. You, you care about people because they're people and everyone deserves to be loved. That's why I feel that I'm very uh, universal in who I choose to associate with. I don't, I don't see people in color. What I mean is I, I judge a man by his character and not the way he looks. No color basically is was inspired by my mom and dad for being brave enough to take a chance, especially in that time, uh, to take a chance on adopting a black child. The social worker um, was not, um, at the time, she, that wasn't a good idea to her. And she didn't think that a white family um, should adopt a black child. It, it was kind of an unusual situation because the uh, Original mother's uh, rights were terminated, and we received Willie as our child on the same day in the courtroom. You know, once he was told, you know, Willie, you're now a Dyson, we all cried. And we were like, you know, this is our brother. He's always been our brother. Um, no one can tell me he's, you know, I don't say, oh, that's my adopted brother. He's my brother, and he always will be. Um, I know that from what I've been told, they were very excited about it, but at the same time, I'm sure there had to been a lot of concerns. I was a young kid, 11 or 12, so uh, it was, I knew it was exciting. It was very exciting. I just didn't know the gravity of it all, you know. It's a 
we, you know, what it meant to have a, you know, an interracial family at the time. I just thought it was normal to me, still is, but it's not normal to our neighbors. Because <laughs> it's a very dangerous topic just to discuss, let alone, you know, actually bring it into your home and make it official. So, uh, that's, that's really where the story kind of started. You heard Brenda had a baby, the baby's me. Left in the trash before the age of three. My daddy is white, my mother's an angel. I carry a halo, don't do this for pay, so just want the- Ah, uh, well, the dumpster is symbolized not for myself. The dumpster is a reflection of everybody, every kid who's ever felt like they were trash because their parents abused them or they were abandoned or they weren't cared about or no one told them they loved them. It's not It's not even about me. The dumpster symbolizes every kid in the world who's ever felt left out, not included, not important. Uh, and I just, I needed that to be a very powerful image. The sun, that's more like, um, an angel figure. Uh, everybody has somebody watching over them. I believe that. I feel like you just have to have enough courage and enough patience to wait for something positive to happen. Because I think, I think everybody deserves something positive to happen in their life. And if you believe that and can wait it out, uh, one of the things can happen for anybody. And the sun is really, I feel like it's my mother. Personally, I feel like it's my mom. Uh, every time I get up, if the sun's up, that means my mind's still there. Uh, and so it, it allows me to pursue my dreams, pursue my goal, uh, and to make, you know, my dreams a reality. I'm basically saying, uh, don't show the world somebody you're not, because uh, I was always taught, and I and I saw it that everything in the dark always comes to light. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I hope people don't think I have some like perfect life because I was adopted and and I was raised by an all white family because that is definitely not the case. Um, I have my flaws and my skeletons in my closet just like everybody else. Uh, all I'm saying there is just be you and own it. My overall message uh, has to do with the way we treat each other. Um, and I think the biggest problem we have right now is that we look at what color we, somebody is first before we decide to, to see what kind of person they are. And so really my message is um, if you cut us all open, we bleed the same thing. Um, and I know that's a very broad statement, but I think once people decide to listen to the music and understand in depth of what I'm actually saying, it's it's bigger than just, oh, no color. It's more like universal towards the way we treat each other is a direct reflection on how the world is today. Um, as far as, you know, my mom, uh, I just, I think that she's an angel. I think my mother was a saint. I know people say that, oh, my mom was an angel and every and everyone's mother is an angel in their own way but uh, I firmly believe that that God <laughs> sent my mom uh, to save me so that I could do this now um, to show people that no matter how evil something may seem or how evil the world gets there are good people 